lift, cut in the lower third. Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I got a great project for you today. We're going to be turning this really cool set of salt and pepper shakers. They're real easy to make. Let's get started. We're going to start off with a piece of wood about uh, two inches uh, square by about four inches long. This little tape uh, glued to the top of my my lay sure is handy. Uh, it could be up to two and a half inches square, up to six inches long, but I think this piece will work fine for us. In this case, we're using a piece of white oak uh, for the salt shaker, and then we'll use a dark piece of wood, probably walnut, for the pepper shaker. So you know the drill. We're going to mark centers, put this between centers, round it, put a chuck tenon on it. We're going to get the tool rest adjusted so we'll just cut above above center. And we're going to use my spindle roughing gouge. Still got a little more tension to give here when you put it on a chuck. You see we've got a nice clean shoulder. Couldn't get a piece of paper in there, which is a good thing. Tighten it down, rotate it. This wood's been drying in a spindle form for about two years, so I think it ought to, it shouldn't move too much. Okay, now we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, square up the side and then we're going to uh, drill it to fit uh, a bung. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I picked up a couple of rubber, uh, uh, rubber bungs from Craft Supply. You can get them from Packard. Uh, you can get them off eBay, but they're more expensive or Amazon. But basically it's for a one inch hole. We're going to drill a one inch hole and recess it slightly. Uh, to seal the salt or pepper in there. Okay, the next step is to face this off. I could use a skew, I could use a spindle gouge, but I'm going to use a, a tiny little 3 8 inch, uh, it's the measurement here across here, uh, bowl gouge, because it takes a nice uh, peeling and shearing cut simultaneously and give me a nice, nice finish. So I'm bracing it with my finger a little bit on the tool rest. Take the skew and just put just a bit of a dimple here. Make it a little easier for that drill bit to follow. Now we're going to drill a one inch hole. Uh, looks like I've got a little area that didn't get surfaced so I'm going to have to come back and clean that, that rim up. And I'll do that later. I'm going to use this great big drill bit I've got that's one inch. Uh, and just to test it, I'm going to go ahead and drill just a short distance, then we'll test the, the bung into it. And then after that, if, it, if it's a good fit, we'll keep on drilling. So we'll, we'll go there just a little ways. So we're going to slow this down. Oh, maybe, don't need to go too fast on this drilling, maybe up uh, 400 or so. So I've got this anchored. And we're just going to ease this in until it just cuts, starts cutting a little bit of a depth. That'll almost accommodate the recess, so if I have to go to a different drill bit, 
I won't lose any wood. So we're going to take this bung and just kind of test fit this thing here. So it looks like it's going to be a tight fit, so I'll be able to. I'll have to clean this hole up a little bit when we finish drilling, open it up just a little bit, but that's fine. I just want to make sure it wasn't going to be too small. So now we're going to measure, see how deep we're going to go with this. Uh, let's say this is going to. Let's mark. This is going to be the bottom of the salt shaker. This is going to be the top where we're going to part it off. Uh, so we're going to measure that. We're going to measure that that distance and give ourselves just a little bit of room at the top, maybe a quarter of an inch. Do any final final shaping there. We're going to come over here to this. Now we could have used a Forstner bit, it's just that I have this nice one inch that works well without needing any kind of extender. And it hollows up a little bit toward the top. Alright, I said I had that little bit of area I got to clean up. We'll go ahead and clean that up now. I think I'm just going to do a little little pull cut with this detail gouge to clean up that edge. I'm going to use a scraper. And here go tick, tick, tick. And that's smooth. Alright, now what I need to do is I need to cut a recess around around the edge here so when this bung goes in it won't bounce off on the table so uh, it needs to be uh, not not much maybe a little more than an eighth of an inch and then I think it'll be uh, deep I think it'll be fine uh, and we're just going to use a box scraper for that and I want to come out to the, far enough out to the edge that you know, I can get my fingernails in there to pull it loose. So we're just going to use this box scraper that's ground at somewhat less than a 90 degree angle here. And we'll cut right on center. And we're only going to go down, like I say, oh, man, probably uh, almost a quarter of an inch. And I'll do that in a couple of passes. Now, we've got a one inch hole, but we probably need to, to uh, sand this out, uh, not sand it, but hollow it a little bit. Before I do that, I want to I wanna shape, uh, actually, yeah, I want to shape the bottom just a little bit. Uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and, and just hollow this a little bit up to maybe, maybe no more than about there because then it's going to start tapering in so I don't want to get it too thin so we're going to use we're going to look for a hook tool to do that so I'm going to use what I this stale niche uh, uh, regrounds uh, scraper that way I can come in behind this shoulder I don't have to go in very deep uh, I'm only going to take it out just a little bit more we're going to pull out maybe maybe uh, up to a quarter of an inch we're going to keep this uh, just about flat and we're going to pull this back just a little bit so it'll rest on a wider part of the scraper. And then I'm going to tilt this over just a little bit. If, if this is facing up at 12 o'clock, then I'm going to be 
starting this at somewhere closer to uh, say 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock would be uh, this way and actually it might be closer between uh, 10 and 11. Get the speed up a little bit and just kind of get an idea of how far down we're going to go. Looks like I can go in something like this. Here we go. Roll it over just a little bit. Work it back and forth. Now, this is an old Harbor Freight tool. I don't remember what it was. It might have been a skew or some type of scraper. Uh, you should have a 5 to 1 ratio of your overhang. Uh, so this handle is, is really too small. I need to knock this handle off and put a bigger handle. But meanwhile, I'm just going to make do. But let's go ahead and clean out, just brush out some of the sawdust here. And, and there we go. A similar scraper. We're going to use that because it's a little heavier duty and I'm going a little deeper in here and this this oak, white oak is really tough wood so uh, we're going to do that. We'll do, let's go ahead and again clear the clear the chips. Ingrain hollowing doesn't really uh, create shavings it just creates sawdust. Yeah, this gives us a little more to hold on to. I need to Bring this tool rest up just a bit. And again, we're going to rotate this over just a little bit. fairly smooth so I'm, I'm happy with that uh, and it's thicker up here a little thinner down here uh, and we're not going to bother to even bother sanding that I'm not sure why Richard Raffin in his book uh, I got this project out of Richard Raffin's book uh, all new turning turning projects and uh, he suggests don't don't bother to sand it Certainly don't put any finish in it for, for a condiment, so that's what we're going to do. Alright, bring our tool rest here. Now it's time to start shaping it over a little bit. Uh, we could use a spindle gouge or a skew to get a nice smooth cut. I think I'm going to work on a skew, but first I'm going to do a parting cut here so we know where we're turning to. teaching point. You can see this fraying here. I wouldn't have gotten that had I plunged directly straight in and then dropped for a peeling cut. Uh, and that's the best way to do it. In this case it won't make any difference because I'm going to round this, this over. But just thought I'd mention that. Alright, so we're just going to bring this cut down here just a little bit for that shape. Anchor. Bevel, lift, cut in the lower third. Okay, now we're going to start in the other direction.
a nice uh, nice smooth cut here uh, I like that uh, we're going to bring this back just a little bit more and, and bring it in anchor level lift the handle to cut Okay, we're going to go ahead and sand this off just a bit, and then I'm going to uh, put a couple of little rings or a couple of V grooves down near the bottom. Okay, we're going to put a couple of decorative V grooves. Probably would have been better had I not reduced this so much, but it's still fairly uh, got three close to three quarters of an inch down here, and this is very hard wood. I'm not going to press that hard, and I think this will work just fine. Here, a little chatter. One more. And I'm just going to touch that up with some 300 grit. Now we're going to take apart an uh, eighth inch parting tool. I did a video on making this parting tool a while back. You can click on the look at my videos to find that. We're just going to come on down. Slow this down just a little bit. Just below a thousand. Switch hands, switch to my left hand. Catch this like this and lower us just a little bit. I'm not gonna touch it. So I need to. Okay. And it tore out, but it didn't tear out here, and, and we're going to sand off the profile on this, so this will be fine. Okay, I got a 60 degree belt on here, 60, uh, 60 grit, not 60 degree. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, and this is a pretty rough grit, but I want it, I want it fairly coarse so I can get a nice round over uh, aggressively without burning the wood, so let's see what we got. profile. I like that profile. Now I'm going to switch to a finer belt and take a couple more passes. rid of the burning I might do a little more hand sanding but I think uh, we're ready to to drill okay we're ready to drill holes for the salt uh, Richard Raffin suggests for salts go from 330 seconds to uh, to 760 force uh, 1 16th inch for pepper so I'm using I'm gonna make the white one the salt so I'm gonna use the 330 seconds and I'm just gonna use my my all and I'm going to put about mark about five five holes to drill one in the middle, one on each each side. Trying to be as symmetrical as I can in appearance. Okay, I've chucked this up in electric drill. I'm going to hold this thing 
and we're just going to drill through straight up and down. One, two, five, and there we go. Now all I've got to do is do a little hand sanding. I'm going to finish with some antique oil. Sixteenth. One will be. Here's the final pair. Uh, the oak I finished with a little liming wax uh, on top of some antique oil, and the uh, the walnut is just antique oil. So, if you got any comments, uh, suggestions, questions, please post them. Bye.